Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new Not A Card project. I love creating little scenes, especially on cards, but because this is not a card, we're gonna make a three-dimensional scene using some products from Honeybee Stamps. We're gonna make this scene in a mug. So pick a mug if you have something already or if you're at the store, find a mug that you really like. I liked this whimsical pattern here. It's black and white. Went really well with the bee theme that we're going to be using. I'm filling this mug with a piece of styrofoam. Find something that'll fit well in your mug. And I just happen to have this green styrofoam that worked really well. We're gonna cover this styrofoam with moss so the color doesn't really matter. I'm going to be using this moss that I've picked out from Simon Says Stamp Store. And it's a really nice assortment of different textures and colors. Using a hot glue gun, I'll glue that moss on top of the styrofoam. And I'm gonna let some of it hang down off the sides of the mug to really give this mug a nice whimsical feel. You can layer up the moss however you'd like. I'm kind of mixing some of the different pieces around to get some different textures and colors throughout the entire scene. And then once you have the entire mug covered, you're just gonna check to make sure you don't have any areas that need to be covered. If you have any holes, make sure you cover those up so that way you can't see any of the styrofoam left. Here I had a couple of nooks and crannies that needed to get covered up. So I'll just glue a few pieces here and there. And the moss tears really easily. So you can tear a bigger piece into as small of a size you need. So our moss is completely filling this mug. It looks fantastic. I did tie a little charm that I had from Prima onto the handle, which looks super cute and ties in really well with the bee theme that we've got going here. So these are from the Lovely Layers Bugs set. And I've die cut the body of the bees from watercolor paper and then the wings from holographic cardstock. Because I used watercolor paper for the body of the bee, that's going to allow me to watercolor them. Now you don't have to watercolor the bee. You could have die cut this from colored cardstock. There is another layer that you could have used that would allow you to add the yellow stripe. But I love watercoloring and I love the look of it. And I thought it would allow me to create a more realistic bee if I went this route. So I'm using Karen markers to watercolor these bees. And I did a total of two different ones. And when I'm watercoloring, I'm actually working with this while it's still wet. I want the colors to blend a little bit. I didn't want them to be perfectly segregated between the two and have the definition of true yellow and true black. I want them to mix and create that furry effect of a bee. So I'm gonna color these and get a really nice deep black going. I did a couple layers of the black to make sure I got it really intense. And now you can see how these colors are blending and creating that nice fuzzy finish. Once the bee was dry, I did bring in some craft tacky glue and I'll glue the wings to the back sides of the bees. And I actually did a total of two wings for each bee. After I glued the wings onto the back side of the bee, then I brought in a little foam square and popped a second wing behind the first one. So now we're gonna have two layers of wings, which gives this bee a lot more dimension. It makes him feel a bit more realistic. So I really liked how this turned out. We're gonna bring in some wire now. Any wire that you have will work for this. I recommend something that's not too thick so that you can still bend it and shape it because that's what we're gonna do here. So I have some thinner wire and I'm going to wrap it around my paintbrush. You could use a pencil or marker, whatever you have that's round. We just wanna create a coil. Then I'm going to stretch that coil out and kind of soften it a little bit more so it's not so tight. And I made sure to leave a little bit at the end so that way I can glue that coil to the bee. This is going to allow the bee to be suspended across our scene. It also will give him a little bit of a wobble so that it looks like he's almost flying between the flowers that we'll be creating. Speaking of those flowers, that is the Lovely Layers tulip set that I used. And I ended up making a total of three different tulips two from the same series of flower pieces and then one using one of the smaller flower pieces. And these are layering pieces so you can build up the tulip to create a really beautiful dimensional shape. And it's not gonna be too bulky because you're gonna glue everything together so it'll look dimensional but not bulky. Works great for cards and also projects like this. So I used Positively Saturated Inks from Simon Says Stamp. I have all the colors listed below in the video description if you wanna know the exact colors that I used. And I'm just ink blending these pieces that I had die cut from white cardstock. So that way they have some nice shading to them. 
And then after I've ink blended all of them, we'll work on gluing these together. So you can kind of see how this is working out here. It's a really fun way to be able to create these flowers by doing all this ink blending and then gluing them together to make some really beautiful dimensional looking flowers. So I have all my pieces here. You can see them all. This is what we used for the largest flower. So there are four pieces for the flower petals, one little intersection of the flower, and then we have two pieces that form the leaf and stem. So I'm gonna glue all of these together and you'll use some sort of liquid glue. I'm using Simon Says Stamp Craft Tacky Glue cause it's really strong and it also dries clear. So I really like that adhesive for projects like this. It also gives you a little bit of wiggle time by using a liquid glue. So that if you don't place things just the right way the first time, you can kind of wiggle it into place. So I'm almost done gluing the flower together. Once we have the flower fully assembled, we're gonna need to do something to keep this upright because this piece is quite heavy. This is now a whole bunch of layers on top of a very small one layer stem and guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna flop over. It can't support this by standing straight up. So we need to put some wire behind the flower. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some wire and I'm going to shape this into generally the same shape of the flower itself with the stem. I have a nice big open area at the top that's going to help support the flower and then we're going to glue the rest of this wire down along the stem. This way it's going to give my flower loads of support and it's not going to flop over when we put this into our scene. So you just wanna make sure this is completely dry before you go ahead and start sticking this into your scene. But check this out, it's so sturdy now. And so I can just take this and push it right into the styrofoam. The wire will puncture through the styrofoam and it will be able to hold it in place. Now I do like to add a quick dot of glue before I push it all the way in just to make sure that it gives it some extra support. So I'll just pop that into the styrofoam and it's going to hold it in place and the glue will help keep it from spinning around. All right, so now we've got our bees and we're gonna start sticking them into the styrofoam just in the same way. So I'm just gonna push that wire through the moss and then into the styrofoam and that'll hold everything in place. I really like how these bees wobble on the wire because it allows them to feel like they're flying in this scene and I just think it's the cutest thing ever. You can curve the wire to form the exact placement for the bees, whatever's perfect for you. Now bees always have a beehive somewhere and I thought it'd be fun to do a little bit of DIY upcycling. So I have a bottle cap that was from some glossy accents and I saved it because it's the perfect shape for a small beehive. I have started placing hot glue on top of this cap and I'm slowly wrapping twine around it. This is going to be a fully wrapped cap then and it will look like a small beehive when we're all done. So I'm just gonna slowly work on wrapping this twine all the way around the cap, trying to make sure I don't leave any gaps. I wanna make sure the twine is completely tight against the layer below it. So we're just gonna keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping until we have the entire thing covered. Now I'm gonna go back around again because I did find that I had a couple of gaps. I definitely tried to make sure I didn't have any gaps, but you know what happens. So I'm just going to go back around all the way again, and this time I got a really nice clean finish. And because I had already wrapped the bottle cap before, now if I do have any gaps, you really can't tell because there's more brown twine underneath versus seeing a clear cap through the brown twine. So I really liked how the second layer really finished things off. I added a little circle of cardstock to be the opening of the beehive, and then I'm just going to put a little bit of glue around the bottom and stick it down right into my scene. I know that the perspective is a little off. He's a little, it's a very small beehive compared to these big bees, but I think what I'm trying to go for isn't realistic. I want something that's fun and whimsical. So I kind of like that it is so much smaller. So I finished things off by adding a few wood chips that I had, a few Aurora Borealis gems from Honey Bee Stamps, and I had made a few extra flowers using that Lovely Layers tulip set, and I popped those in between the bees. I absolutely love how this scene turned out. It is so cute, and it was so much fun to make something three-dimensional like this that I could have easily done on a card, but it is so much more realistic and fun when you can do it on something like 
a mug here that we used. You could have also translated this into something like a vignette or other fun projects. So I hope that this idea is inspiring to you. I hope it's kind of triggered some ideas that you could do making a scene like this with some products that you already have. If you are interested in any of the products that I did use today, I have them linked below in the video description as well as over on the blog. So don't forget to check those out if you're interested. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of our future videos. I'll be back soon with more to share with you all, but until then, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Bye.